Hi, my name is Mia. I am a knitter and crocheter based in Scotland and today I'm coming at you with a bit of a project update. Uh, I'm going to apologise in advance just in case my lighting is a bit all over the place. It's sort of overcast here today so clouds are coming and going which means it's kind of hard to keep the lighting consistent. I don't have any kit to help with that. I don't have like ring lights and stuff like that that I'm comfortable with, uh, especially as someone who wears glasses. That makes lighting kind of difficult. So we're just going with what Scotland is giving us just now, which is intermittent clouds. So apologies if that's kind of frustrating or annoying, but it is what it is. Um, but yeah, today I'm just kind of going to do a project update. I've got a finished object to show, which I'm very excited about. So I'll talk to you guys about that and then go into my works in progress and as always finish with my temperature blanket. So first things first, I have got my finished field day cardigan. I say finished, I haven't blocked it yet, which is obviously going to make a huge difference, or at least I find that it usually does. Um, so take finished with a grain of salt, I guess, but I've finished making it, it just needs to wash and dry. So here is my field day cardigan. I'll try and step back so I can get it all uh, in the one frame. You can really see the drop shoulder when I hold it up like this, but I think that it looks so cute. I'm really pleased with the colour. I'm actually really pleased with the button choice. I think I mentioned in my last video it was just buttons that I already had lying about. They're sort of coconut shell buttons um, and I think they look great. I was talking about the front and back being slightly different colours and I decided to go... I guess I would call this the front. I don't know. Uh, and I think that that colour looks way nicer. I think this just would have been... it's too different of a tone I think. These are kind of orangey on the back and there's not much of that in the cardigan so I definitely think I made the right choice there. Um, I have done all of the sewing in at the ends which for me, for what I'm used to with a sweater was quite a lot uh, but I guess it's just the difference in construction for a cardigan. I was also surprised when I finished it, I feel like the drop shoulder is really quite significant. Like this is not a lot of sleeve but it is long enough so it's just quite a kind of severe drop shoulder I guess but I actually really like how it looks on. I'm not going to show you it on because like I said I haven't uh, blocked it yet so I feel like it hasn't reached its full potential and I don't want to ruin it. I might wear it in my next video and then I can give you a quick kind of try on. Um, but I am really pleased with how it's come out. I wouldn't say that my knitting is the most consistent. Um, I think there's, I don't know how well you can see it, but I think there is quite a bit of a difference between my knitting and purling, uh, as in my tension. It's not super obvious on camera actually, but I can see it. Uh, but I'm hoping that will block out a bit as well. So yeah, overall I'm really pleased with this project and how it's come out. Um, there's not really much I would change about it, I wouldn't say. Like, I would say I've learned a lot from it, but not through making mistakes that have affected the final project, if that makes sense. So I guess I'll talk a little bit quickly about my experience working with that pattern. Um, it took me three months start to finish, which for me for a garment is pretty fast. So it wasn't a super time consuming project because of the gauge um, and it wasn't particularly difficult, I wouldn't say. Like there were a lot of things that are quite new to me, but just because I've never made a cardigan before, not because it's full of complicated instructions, I would say it was very clearly written. Um, there's a lot of video instructions that you can move to if you need them uh, and it's one of those patterns that gives you kind of a number of rows as well as the length that it should take you to. So you kind of have options if your gauge is slightly off or something like that, you know, you're not kind of stuck. You've got multiple options to kind of make sure that you're on the right track. So that for me was really helpful, making sure that it was coming out to the right kind of size. I initially thought when I was making this that I maybe could have sized down. Now that I'm looking at it, again, granted I haven't blocked it yet, but I feel actually a size small for me is about the right size. I'm usually a UK 8 for jumpers and things, um, or a size small. So that's kind of what I went for. Started making it, thought maybe I should have gone for an extra small, because sometimes that's kind of my size, but not usually. Um, and I just felt it was coming out quite oversized. But then when I got the sleeves finished and that kind of thing, it is just that kind of almost boxy fit. I think it is very deliberate and it looks lovely. So again, fingers crossed it stays that way 
when I've blocked it, but for now, I think I'll be really pleased with the fit. Working with the yarn as well, I chose the Plymouth Yarn Sea Isle, uh, and that was in the colour Sand Dollar. And I again love the colour. I've mentioned a couple of times I found that yarn kind of clingy, like it would stick to my clothes or whatever while I'm working with it. But as I have said, it didn't cause me too much trouble. Uh, it was a sort of annoying thing every now and then, but you just kind of get used to roughly how much yarn you should pull out from the ball at a time and work with that and it kind of, the problem alleviates itself really. Um, should also mention, it said that I should need about three and a half balls of yarn, so I bought four and I came very close to finishing the, set, the fourth ball of yarn. Like I really, it was kind of verging on yarn chicken for a while. I think actually I'll go and grab what I've got left. Yeah, this is all I've got left of my fourth skein, so really not a lot of wiggle room at all. Uh, I guess if you were supposed to need four balls of yarn, you could potentially find yourself needing to break into a fifth, uh, which could be kind of annoying. I was lucky that I needed three and a half, and so when I went over a little bit, I ended up having a little bit of spare to work with, but yeah, it would have been a bit of a close call if I needed all four balls of yarn. I should say I stuck exactly to the row measurements it said, so it wasn't like I was adjusting doing extra rows to meet the length that it required or anything. I went for exactly the pattern as written, so I should really have only needed the amount that it said. I know that I also used a different yarn than was mentioned in the pattern, but all of the kind of gauge and yardage and that kind of thing added up perfectly, so again it should have been fine. It could be something to do with my translation of one yarn to another. Uh, I don't really know. I'm not super well versed in those things, so maybe I'm wrong, but maybe that's a helpful thing for you to know. If you decided to use this yarn to make it, you might need a little bit more than the pattern recommends. But yeah, overall, working with that pattern and that yarn was a really lovely experience. I am really pleased with the finished object. I think it's the sort of thing that I'm going to get a lot of wear out of. Um, and I highly doubt it's going to be the last cardigan that I knit because I struggle to find nice cardigans in the shops. I find a lot of them are kind of nylon blends and things like that and you wear it once or twice and it starts to pill horrendously and it starts to stretch out and they stain really easily. Um, granted I'm kind of clumsy so part of that's on me but still I just really struggle to find nice good quality cardigans in the shops without then going to the super super premier stuff like fully cashmere or whatever, which is just not really in my budget. I don't mind spending a little bit more on yarn that I'm working with because I view it as like a two-in-one. I get the activity of knitting as well as the finished object, so I don't mind paying a bit more because I'm getting more for my money in my mind. Uh, whereas if I'm just buying a finished object, I'm not so likely to spend as much because first of all, you don't get the joy of making it yourself. And secondly, I don't really find that you get what you pay for a lot of the time when you're buying cardigans and things in the shops so uh, I feel like that was a fairly budget friendly option to be honest and the fact that it's half plant fibre half wool should hopefully make it really wearable like there's that breathable plant fibre but also the warmth of the wool should make it kind of spring summer autumn wearable in Scotland anyway so yeah I'm really pleased with it to be honest uh, I so far don't have any kind of negative things to say particularly but I guess Again, if I mention it in the next video after I've worn it a few times, I might be able to share more on how it wears and temperature and all that kind of thing. So yeah, that is all I have to say at the minute for my field day cardigan. So I will move right into my works in progress. And for the first one, I kind of have to immediately backtrack because I said that the second I started this, I would fly through it and I have not. So this is all I have done of my DK Vanilla Sock by the Crazy Sock Lady. Uh, this is pathetic. This is maybe like 20 minutes of work or something. I've literally just made the cuff and done a couple of rows, like to the point where you can't even see them properly of stocking it. I've done nothing. Uh, and that is because I got really close to finishing the field day cardigan and then just life kind of went a bit crazy. It's a super busy period for me. I am now less than five weeks out from my wedding so you know it's a super busy period maybe not the wisest time to start a youtube channel but here we are uh so yeah it got really busy and i really just wanted to focus on getting my cardigan finished for the springtime so 
socks kind of went to the wayside but I'm not going to start another project until these are finished so they should hopefully start to take priority. They'll literally only take me a couple of days. Like I've just been putting them off. It's not that they're time consuming. They will take days. So hopefully I'll be able to get myself to finish these soon. I've got some sock blockers. So if I get them done by the end of the week and blocked, then these will be good to go in a couple of weeks. So hopefully they should be finished by the next time I film. I have no excuse at this point. The cardigan is done. So these really need to take precedence over anything else that I decide that I want to make. But yeah, I do really like working with this pattern. The yarn has actually been really pleasant to work with as well. It's one of those things, because you're coming up with new colours every row, it does, when you start work working on it, uh, kind of keep you motivated. So I've also got loads of yarn. Like I've made a sock and a cuff and I have way more than half a ball left, which is normally what you would expect from specifically sock yarn. Although I tend to have little scraps left of sock yarns, so maybe not. Um, but I think from memory, this was a 200 gram ball. So, oh no, it's 150 grams. So you could potentially squeeze two pairs out of just this ball of yarn if you were clever about it or if you had small feet or whatever. So I guess when I finish these, I will weigh how much I've got left of this and see if maybe I can make a pair for myself as well or make him another pair if I'm feeling generous. Um, but yeah, it's been a pleasure to work with. I am enjoying it. It's coming out the way that I would have liked. Uh, it's just kind of been ignored. Um, so hopefully next time I see you, I have a finished pair of socks. Funnily enough, the next work in progress that I've got, I actually have the opposite problem. I thought that I would not have touched this by the time I speak to you again. And yet I've like, doubled the size of it. So this is my November beanie um, and I'm making this in Nervous Fibres yarn. I'm sure this is the Devonia DK in the colour Shroom um, and the colours are so cool. Like the variegation is just the prettiest thing ever. I don't know if I mentioned actually the socks are made in West Yorkshire Spinners Colour Lab sock yarn. So it's a DK sock yarn. Um, but yeah, this is a Nervous Fibre one. So again, Scottish company, love that. Um, but yeah, this one was just my project for I need something to do when I am maybe in church or traveling or whatever. And I had a bus journey and a train journey that were an hour or so each, I think, something like that. So I just brought this with me and that's what I did to keep me occupied while I was on the bus and on the train. Um, so I now have about 10 centimeters finished of this and I think it's 13 centimeters before you move on to the next section. So. The thing is with where this is now, if I do want to work on it, I have to kind of concentrate because three centimetres is that funny length where it doesn't take you very long. So you will soon be moving on to the next step. So this is no longer a viable, just kind of do it without thinking project. I will need to do that stage to get it back to just working on it without thinking so much. So I don't know if this is going to end up having that done soon so that it can then again become a don't have to pay attention project or if it properly goes on the back burner this time and I bring it back out maybe after summer. I guess we'll see. It is also a nice small project so it's not necessarily not summer friendly. It's just maybe not the most exciting thing to work on in the summer because you know you won't get use out of it for a while. So I don't really know where we are with this one. I thought I did last time and I was very wrong. So. I don't want to promise that it won't be touched uh, in order to find myself to be a liar again. And I also don't want to promise that it will be worked on and become my go-to kind of not thinking project because that could also be a lie. So who knows, I'm not gonna try and set myself a goal for what to do with this one because I've got no idea. So this is where we're at with my November beanie. I am really liking how it's coming out but it should not be a priority to make a hat just before the summer. Not that we're getting anything like summery weather anytime soon. I feel like all I do in this channel is complain about the weather, but it has been the greatest start to the year that I can remember, uh, which is not very pleasant. So hopefully I'll be able to stop complaining soon if it starts to brighten up a bit. So last but not least, as always, is my temperature blanket. And we are officially on row three, which is very exciting for me. Um, and not only are we on row three, but we have also got a new color featured. So this outside colour here is Fawn um, and that is I believe for 16 to 20 degrees. So we have started to get 
a little bit of a shift in the temperature which is really nice because as you can see I think literally about half of my squares are the exact same with this kind of sage green and then almost emeraldy green uh, mixed together. Yeah, we've just had a lot of the same sort of rubbishy temperatures going on. I have also got another square from this last week, which is also that fawn colour with the chestnut heather in the centre, because um, we've had a couple of weeks where it has actually gotten to like 16 degrees. So hopefully we're on the way up, but I haven't had the chance to block this one yet, which is why it hasn't been added. But I think we're about 14 weeks into the year already. So we're coming up to about a quarter of the way through the blanket, which is kind of crazy. Uh, a quarter of the way through the year already is a bit mad, but yeah. Uh, I am loving how it's coming out. Again, I always say this, but I'm really pleased with how the colours are working together. It does just feel like a very cosy, granny blanket vibe, which is exactly what I'm going for in my living room. So I think it's going to be perfect in there. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing how it comes out when it's complete. But yeah, this is just, this is the thing that literally every Monday I'm immediately on because I'm so excited to see what colour I get to use and how the blanket is growing, so being in the third row is very exciting for me. Uh, I'm really enjoying working on this project. Again, would highly recommend it, like it's truly the highlight of my Monday every week, is getting to make the next granny square and see how the blanket comes together. And it is so quick and easy, like literally half an hour of work a week and you get a blanket by the end of the year from doing almost nothing. So yeah, highly recommend it. I'm having so much fun working on this and I'm really excited to have the completed blanket. So that is all I have to share this week. I feel like it's not a huge amount, but I did have the finished cardigan, so that's probably why. I think I finished both sleeves in the last three weeks or so, which is actually not bad going. Um, like I've said before, I'm not the fastest knitter in the world. I tend to take my time with projects uh, just because I don't tend to have loads of time to knit. So the fact that I got that cardigan finished in three months is very quick for me. Like normally it would take me about twice that length of time. So. I'm really pleased with that to be honest, I am so excited to wear it as soon as I finish filming both that and my granny square are getting blocked uh, and hopefully it'll be wearable in the next couple of days. So yeah, that's me for this week, thank you so much for watching and I will see you again in a few weeks time, bye!